Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Cassie. I talk about video games, do video game reviews, unboxings, and all sorts of other video game related topics. Today I want to talk about Steam Next Fest. It ended yesterday and started last Monday. And I have not been able to do a video on this yet, so I actually played all the games I was going to play last Monday. So I've just been sitting on these for a week. But uh, I wanted to talk about the ones that I actually enjoyed enough to play more than like five minutes of. I played through about like 16 demos or so. I've got like 150, 160 like on my wish, on my wish list on Steam. So I kind of went through all of my games on there and downloaded every single demo possible, which it's kind of crazy that it was only like 10% of the games that I have on my wish list had demos and that's it. Um, kind of, kind of weird. But yeah, unfortunately Steam Next Fest ended yesterday so some of these may still be up but for the most part the demos only last until the end of Steam Next Fest. So it's all up to the developer. I've never really been a demo person until recently. I uh, just, for some reason, never really did demos. I just played games when they looked good. Uh, but demos are really a great way for you to like really kind of see if you're into something or not. Because just because somebody else really likes it does not mean that I'm going to like it and vice versa. So you just never really know until you dive in yourself. And a lot of these games are kind of like, you know, unknowns to like smaller games that not a lot of people talk about anyway, so it's kind of hard to gather whether or not you will actually like them. So yeah, I played around 16 demos and I put in maybe, I don't know, there's quite a few of them that I did not really play more than like a minute of. Uh, hopped out pretty quickly because they weren't really my thing, but I figured I'd talk about the ones that I spent at least like five minutes on, and there's nine of those. So yeah, uh, not too bad actually. Um, a little more than half of the games that I played I enjoyed enough to play quite a bit of, so yeah. Um, the first one I played was We Harvest Shadows. Uh, this is kind of a um, like a survival farming sim, but it's like more realistic. So you start out, you're in this, like, uh, you decided that you wanted to kind of, I don't know, get away from society. There's not really enough of backstory to know why exactly, but something, I think something happened with his wife. And so, uh, he decided he wanted to live out in the middle of nowhere and kind of, uh, rebuild this home. Uh, that's kind of a mess, you know. So you start out the first day, uh, every day you wake up you have like a list of tasks to do and uh, you've got to do those tasks like clean up the mess, that's because when you start out at this house it's like it's got trash everywhere. So you're cleaning up the trash, um, you are harvesting tomatoes to make money so you can build a chicken coop and stuff but it's you want to get everything done before dark because there's like some weird stuff going on at dark and um, I didn't really play enough of the demo uh, I played maybe like three in-game days and I think there's five in the demo but I got stuck uh, at one point where I wasn't like I ran out of money because I bought the wrong thing and I uh, couldn't undo what I did so that kind of frustrated me a little bit. But um, other than that, it seemed like it was kind of interesting. So it may actually be pretty good. Uh, there's some few things that I wish they would, you know, work on, especially like with that kind of like glitch. Like if you accidentally uh, build like a lamp post or something for you to be able to remove it because I could not figure out a way to get rid of that or like sell it back or something. Um, but yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, definitely check that out if there is still a demo. I don't know if there is or not. This one was my favorite 
of all the demos I played. Uh, the precinct. The precinct. Uh, this is basically like a top-down, um, like isometric Grand Theft Auto, uh, but you're playing as a cop. Uh, it's based in like the 1980s and it seems to have like quite a bit of a story, but it's supposed to be like an open sandbox game. Uh, there's a handbook that gives you a list of all the crimes and how you should approach said crimes. Um, like you can uh, issue parking tickets for somebody parking in front of a fire hydrant. You can just walk around and do all that. Um, you can also like you know, arrest people uh, for breaking and entering, or you can give them a fine. Uh, it's all dependent on what the rule book says you are supposed to do. Um, and then you can, you know, go about it that way. You can also use like a helicopter uh, to help like police chases and stuff. And uh, for it being an indie game, like, I think this actually looks like it's going to be really cool. Um, it's, like I said, kind of like the older style, like Grand Theft Auto 1 and 2. Uh, but um, there's, it just seems like there's a whole lot to do in this world and um, kind of like endless results. There were a few glitches. Um, it could be smoothed out a little bit, but uh, I think it's going to be really fun. Uh, the next game is Windblown. Uh, this is from the Dead Cell devs, which I have not really played enough of Dead Cells to really say too much about it, but um, this is basically another roguelite uh, game where it's kind of like these platforms up in the sky and you get... There's a set of characters with different kind of abilities and moves and stuff that you can start out with and as you go through, um, you can kind of like dash really quick and you can use different abilities against these enemies and stuff. Um, and then when you fail, you go back to this other island where you can buy upgrades and stuff. And then, uh, each run is going to have, you know, like new drops and stuff, just like any roguelite. Um, and it's going to get tough and you're going to die. And that's just how roguelites are. It seemed pretty cool. I won't say that... I don't know that I would say that it's like the best uh, roguelite I've played. Uh, I mean, there's, you know, so many great ones out there, but uh, it was colorful and seems like it might be okay. Uh, the next one is my second favorite of the demos that I played. This one is called Bionic Bay. This was shown during, I want to say, the Indie World Showcase that Nintendo had, the last one. It's basically kind of like a Play Dead style, like inside, uh, where it's like a um, 2.5D uh, side-scrolling puzzle platformer action game. Uh, but it's kind of like you're in this like biohazard like wasteland uh, where you're trying to get through the platforms and stuff. There's a lot of really dangerous obstacles like there's like turning gears with spikes and uh, I guess kind of like I haven't played Super Meat Boy but I would assume it's kind of in that vein just not uh, as crazy as that. Um, but you can also, uh, you can replicate objects, like if there's a block, you can, uh, you get this tool where you can copy that object, but that object switches with you when you uh, replicate it. So say if there's a, um, a block in, in mid-air or whatever, and you uh, switch with that, then you're going to switch to that spot. Um, and then that block is going to be where, where, where you were. Uh, and it's kind of like a, an interesting way to get through some of the obstacles and stuff. There's mines and stuff that you can blow up. There's ragdoll, ragdoll physics. Um, I really like anything that's play dead style, like Planet of Lana, uh, Little Nightmares, you know, inside Somerville, um, I just, I think all of them are really, really cool. And it's like one of my favorite genres, if you just want to call it like Play Dead Likes, I guess. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, they're just, uh, they're great. Um, and I wish we had more of those. So when I saw this at the Indie World uh, showcase, I was like, oh, this is going to be something that I like. And I played a lot of it. The demo is really long. I don't know if it's still up or not, but definitely check that out if you like those style games. Um, the next one was uh, Sopa, Tale of the Stolen Potato. This one was a really cute game that I remember seeing probably like over a year ago at one of the indie showcases. Um, you play as a boy um, who's going to grab ingredients for his grandmother's soup. And he like kind of like he goes into the pantry and the pantry is like this kind of like almost like scary place and he sees like things and it turns out to be this adventure where he kind of like almost like goes into Narnia sort of thing like when he goes in the pantry and there's like this big adventure for him to get a sack of potatoes for his uh, grandmother's soup. Um, so it kind of ends up being kind of like this action adventure game um, and mixed with a cooking game and it's cute. Um, I don't know that I liked it as much as I thought I would. Uh, there's like a lot of things, a lot of dialogue and stuff, and there's some like rhythm games that are kind of mixed in too. I don't think I got enough of this game to really say if I'm going to like it or not. I did play the full demo, so um, we'll see. Um, I think that's supposed to come to Game Pass when it comes out, but uh, I thought it was supposed to come out already, so I have no idea. Um, the next one was Neon Blood. Uh, this one's kind of like a detective um, style, like cyberpunk uh, game. Kind of like a, I don't know, like an adventure, um, not really like a walking sim, but kind of like a narrative adventure game. Uh, mixed with some like detective and some kind of um it's got kind of like a turn-based like fighting mechanic as well so uh it's interesting the the visuals are really cool um i really like the art style of this but i don't know that i really enjoy the gameplay too much so um I don't know if I'll get this when it comes out or not, but I know a lot of people would probably enjoy this. It's just a little too slow for me, I think. Um, this one, the next one is something that's really, really cool. Uh, this was actually created by this guy that used to, um, used to work for Disney, like the theme parks, and he used to, like, create, like, the, um, kind of like the the worlds and stuff that you could like go into you know like kind of like when you go into universal studios and it's designed to look like how like um ghostbusters would look like walking in or something you know like that kind of design um and he decided he wanted to create his own um video game studio and he created Ari Buck 2 and the Anytime Elevator, which is kind of like Back to the Future. Uh, you start out with this elevator that has transported you back into the past in ancient Egypt. And uh, it kind of also has like kind of like this Indiana Jones um, or like Tomb Raider style uh, story where you're trying to... Uh, grab the artifacts and stuff. Um, but it's a platformer. It's a 3D platformer, and the platforming feels really good in this game. Uh, I heard about this from Kind of Funny, because Tim Geddes was talking about it, and uh, it sounded really interesting, and I really like 3D platformers, especially coming off of Astrobot. I'm just craving more 3D platformers than ever. Um, so... Yeah, uh, I really enjoy that, and it's got an interesting art style. I don't know that it's my favorite art style, but the gameplay definitely makes up for it, so uh, definitely check that out. Uh, the next game is called Call of Boba. This kind of has like a Stardew Valley type art style where you're kind of like this little penguin, and you get really depressed and, I don't know, like just 
not having a good time with work and stuff and you decide to go back home. And when you hop off the bus, you run into one of your old friends who's running a boba tea shop and needs help. So you go and work for him and you start running this boba shop. I really like boba and I like cutesy style games and uh, it's kind of like, you know, Stardew Valley as far as like the visuals go. Um, and then kind of like Diner Dash when it comes to like managing the restaurant and stuff. It's pretty fast paced with that. Um, but like the story is really cute. It's kind of, kind of sad, you know, in a way, but, um, I think it's cute. And if you like cozy games, definitely check that out. Um, the next one was a red walking robot. I remember seeing this one in like some some preview event. I don't know which one it was, but you're basically this um, this little wind-up robot, um, and you have to get through obstacles. But if you go too fast and turn a corner, you're gonna tip over, and if you tip over, you gotta start over again. Uh, there are checkpoints, thankfully, but um, it's kind of like a I guess kind of like a platformer um, and like a puzzle in a way. Like you get like different abilities and stuff as you go through. It's very frustrating. The robot even gets frustrated. The more that you die, the more the robot like starts like fuming and getting angry. <laughs> it's really kind of funny. Um, I didn't fully play through the demo because I was getting frustrated with it because I couldn't get him to because you get like this uh, kind of like this jetpack where you can gain like some momentum in air and jump up somewhere but or kind of like float but if you tilt a certain way you're gonna <laughs> just kind of go like this off into the distance and um, yeah it's uh very frustrating, uh, but it's cool. It's unlike anything else I've played before, and um, I might play it when it comes out, but even though I was mad, but uh, it's definitely addictive because I kept trying and trying over and over and over again. Um, so yeah, those were all the demos that I played through during Steam Next Fest that I spent more than five minutes on. So um, if you should definitely check any of those out, uh, some of them may still have the demos up. I'm not sure. I haven't gone back to check, uh, but I do have the links to all these in my description below. So go ahead and look at them if you want. And thank you for watching. I will see you guys next time.